Hi everyone, thanks for attending the talk virtually. Today I'm going to share our work on bit vector aware query optimization for decision support queries. This is a joint work with my colleague Sergey and Vivek from Microsoft Research. Bit vector filtering is a technique that eliminates tuples that do not quantify join conditions early in query processing. It is widely used in commercial databases to speed up query execution. Examples of data structures used for bit vector filtering include Bloom filters and bitmap filters. Let's see how it works with an example. Assume we want to find out all the items purchased by customers from Washington State by joining the customer table with the order table using a hash join. We start by scanning the customer table and applying the predicate on state, and we build a hash table on the remaining tuples. We then scan the order table and probe the hash table to get the result. If we step back and look at the build side of the hash join, after applying the predicate on the customer table, only customer 3 remains. So if we create a bitmap on whether the customer ID passes the predicate, we can use the bitmap to filter out tuples in order table that do not quantify the join condition. Now the number of input tuples of the hash join has reduced and its cost decreases. We use an arrow in the query plan to show a bit vector filter is created from the hash join and push them to the order table. The impact of tuple elimination is even more prominent when a query has multiple joins. Let's join three tables from JLB benchmark schema. This is the optimal plan of this query, and then we add bit vector filters to the plan. Because MK joins with both table T and K, the bit vector filters are created from both joins and push it down to MK. In this case, the number of tuples reduces for both the output of MK as well as the join cardinality of hash join 2. This results in 5 times query cost reduction. The bit vector filtering seems to be quite effective in reducing query execution cost, but can we even get more out of it? If we look at the query again, there actually exists another plan P2 with even lower cost. Instead of just 5x cost reduction, we can get 15 times cost reduction with bit vector filters. Then why are we not getting that plan? Well, we of course want to blame the query optimizer. But think about it. What the query optimizer sees during its plan search is not the two plans with bit vector filters, but the two plans without bit vector filters. With no bit vector filtering, P2 is indeed more expensive than P1. The query optimizer correctly chooses P1 as the optimal plan, but P2 just turns out to be cheaper after ending bit vector filters. What have we learned so far? Bit vector filters are added to the plan produced by the optimizer to speed up query execution. However, we still miss out big opportunities to reduce plan cost if the optimizer does not consider bit vector filters during plan search. Then what will it take to consider bit vector filters during query optimization? The bad news is that the search space of the query optimizer will increase by an exponential factor if bit vector filters are considered. At a high level, when there is no bit vector filtering, we only need to figure out the best subplans for each combination of relations. Now, we need to figure out the best subplans for the combinations of relations cross product the combinations of bit vector filters. Let's look at the base relation MK in both plans. In a word without bit vector filters, MKs are the same in two plans. However, with bit vector filters, a different combination of bit vector filters are pushed down to MK. As a result, the number of tuples from MK is different in the two plans. Thus, they are not equivalent anymore. We know we have left big opportunities on the table if the query optimization doesn't consider bit vector filters. But ending bit vector filters simply blows up the search space. Can we do anything about it? In the rest of the talk, I first focus on the important snowflake queries, and I walk you through how having the bit vector filters turns out to reduce the query plan search space for a subclass of snowflake queries and plan space. I'll then describe how we leverage this finding to produce alternative join orders that complement the existing query optimization for arbitrary decision support queries. Then I'll show how we integrate the technique 
to Microsoft SQL Server. For the scope of our analysis, we focus on Snowflake queries with primary key foreign key joins. Here is an example of a Snowflake query with PKFK joins on TBCDS schema. Store cells is a fact table then joins with dimension tables with PKFK joins, where the arrow in the join graph points from the fact table to the dimension table. The PKFK joins can also be recursive, where the fact table joins with a chain of dimension tables. We also scope our analysis to the plane space of right deep trees with our cross products because this has shown to be an important plane space for expensive decision support queries. Let's first look at two planes of a star query with PKFK joins. The fact table R0 joins with two dimension tables R1 and R2. The query plane P1 and P2 use different join orders for the same query. For the analysis, we assume that bit vector filters have no false positives and we measure the cost by summing up the intermediate result sizes of all operators. What we want to show here is that, although the join orders of P1 and P2 are different, the cost of the two plans are the same with bit vector filters. In P1, R0 is filtered by the bit vector filters created from harsh join 1 and harsh join 2. So the cardinality of this operator is R0 semi-join R1 semi-join R2. Semi similarly, the cardinality of harsh join 2 is R0 join R2 semi-join R1. Our key observation is that with PKFK joins of fact and dimension tables, the cardinality of the join is the same as the cardinality of the semi-join. So the cardinality of the harsh join 2 is the same as the cardinality of joining all relations together. We also analyze the cardinalities in plan 2. If we sum up the cardinality of all the operators in the two planes, we'll find they're the same. Here is our key insight. For the plans that have the same cost, we only need to consider one of them during plan search. In other words, the plan search only needs to consider a set of representative plans. Let's count the number of representative plans in a star query with one fact table and n dimension tables. There are only two types of right deep trees with our cross products, where the fact table is either the rightmost leaf or the second rightmost leaf. For the first type of plans, all bit vector filters are pushed down to R0. We can compute the cardinality of each operator accordingly. Because the total cardinality is the same for any permutation of R1 to Rn, we only have one representative plan of this type. We do the same analysis for the second type. Different joint permutations of R2 to Rn still have the same cost, but the cardinality of the two rightmost leaves changes with different dimension table R1. So the number of representative plans is n. Now the total number of representative plans is n plus 1, and this is a linear to the number of relations in the query. We can extend our analysis to snowflake queries with PKFK joins. Again, our key insight is that the plan search only needs to consider representative plans. We prove that it is sufficient to examine a linear number of plans to find the optimal plan. In practice, the decision support queries are more complex. They can have non-PKFK joins, joins between dimension tables, and multiple fact tables. We leverage our analysis and propose an algorithm to produce a joint order of arbitrary decision support queries by iteratively extracting and optimizing snowflake queries. Let's see how it works with JLB benchmark query 2A. The query has non-PKFK join between the table MK and MC, and both MK and MC are fact tables. We start by picking one fact table, say MK, and identify the snowflake associated with MK. We optimize the join order of this subgraph based on our analysis and shrink it as a single relation S1. We continue this process until a single fact table is left. Note that the remaining join graph can have non-PKFK join. We optimize the final subgraph with both our analysis and some heuristics. Our algorithm searches a linear number of alternative join orders that are complementary to the plan search of the existing query optimizer. But as we see in the first motivating example, such alternative join orders can be considered suboptimal by the query optimizer's cost estimation. So how can we take advantage of those join orders under the existing query optimization framework? 
Here we show how to integrate our technique into our Volcano Cascade Query Optimization Framework with minimal changes. We implement the technique in Microsoft SQL Server as a new transformation rule. In Query Optimization, when decision support query join graph are detected, this rule is triggered to produce candidate subplans. The relevant cardinality estimation of the transformed subplans is adjusted to reflect the impact of bit vector filters. To avoid messing up the join orders on those subplans that are already transformed by this rule, we disable further join reordering on those subplans. These subplans are still subject to additional transformations such as aggregation pushdown, and the final query plan picked by the optimizer is subject to its existing cost model. While this is not a comprehensive integration, we have already observed lots of improvements in plan quantity. We evaluate our prototype with three workflows. Our baseline is the original Microsoft SQL Server 2019, where the bit vector filters are used in query processing. This figure shows the total CPU execution time of the queries in each workload. The y-axis shows the ratio of the workload-level CPU of our approach compared with that of the baseline. We have observed 22% to 60% reduction in workload-level CPU time. In particular, we have seen the most performance improvement in JLB benchmark because the queries in this benchmark have the most complex join graphs on average. We zoom into the individual query CPU time for the top 50 most expensive queries in JLB. The y-axis shows the log-scale CPU cost normalized by the most expensive query in the workload. We have seen significant CPU reduction across the board, and several queries have two orders of magnitude CPU time reduction. We do see some queries have become more expensive, but the number of such cases is small. To conclude, we show that considering bit vector filters in query optimization can have much better plans. We have done the first systematic analysis of bit vector filters in query optimization for a class of queries and plan space. Based on our analysis, we propose a join order algorithm for arbitrary decision support queries. This work opens a new dimension in query optimization. We envision many open problems for bit vector aware query optimization, including analysis for a border class of queries in plan space, as well as comprehensive integration with different query optimization frameworks. With that, I'm happy to take questions.